Hello, we are so glad to have you joining us today for our special Positive Channels uh, pre production. Uh, I am your host, Andrea Copeland, and on today's show, we have a Better Times project. Um, you'll recognize my guest, some of you. About two or three years ago, we did a show, uh, of, well, it was then, Green Time Academy. But they are now Better Times Project because better, they, they're seeing better times and they have evolved in so many years now. So I want to go ahead and introduce my guest to you. I have back to the studio, Yale Landsberg. He is the founder of Better Times Project. And we also have with us Emily Hedberg, who is a Better Times clock user. Okay, um, and looking at this clock, as I said, some of you may be familiar because some years ago we did a show where uh, Yale uh, rolled out his idea of how he can help us with our circadian rhythm. Right, Yale? That's right. Okay, and Better Times Project, their mission is to help those who live in modern urban, who live modern urban lifestyles become more aware of the risks of circadian rhythm related illnesses. So somebody's thinking, what is all that about? So Yale, you have, uh, you, you've done so much in the last few years. This started, you said, seven years ago. Yes, ma'am. And our last show we did about two years ago, with our first one being about three, three or four years ago. So give us a progress report. Well, thank you very much, Andrea. Um, the Better Times Project is the out, outgrowth of uh, the Green Time Academies attempt to uh, basically make available uh, in a number of different ways uh, clocks and, and uh, watches as well that are able to uh, 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 help people get better in touch with uh, nature's rhythms and cycles and their own rhythms and cycles as well. Uh, we started out with uh, uh, used laptops. Uh, you were kind enough to be one of the first people to generate, to, uh, to donate one to us. Uh, we work closely with uh, John Forbes and uh, Jeremy Pratt of the uh, CompuTune Up uh, to make these available. Uh, we had clock cases made by our good friend uh, uh, John Lynch. Uh, we put uh, them into Alzheimer's dementia units, uh, also the Virginia Discovery Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, some schools, and then eventually uh, had uh, uh, the clocks uh, available on uh, the web, a uh, free version on the web, then also as a screensaver, and more recently we have moved into uh, Android mobile phones, tablets. Uh, we now have uh, an example of that uh, on, uh, on TVs as well, using yeah. a new device that uh, just became available recently and also now on tablets as well. Okay, all right, now this, this has been a, as, as I said at the opening of the show, this has been a uh, seven years in the making. Um, and I know you've seen many, uh, many difficult days. So why has this been something you have chosen to pursue and, and, and continue to do this? Why well, is it so important? Well, as, as I, I mentioned on earlier shows, uh, uh, the, the idea and the image of the clock came to me uh, uh, just about uh, seven years ago, middle of December 2005, it uh, came to me, uh, wasn't thinking about it, uh, played around with the idea programmatically for a few days and forgot about it, said I had better things to do with my life. Hmm. Uh, four weeks later, I had a 13-hour heart attack. Hmm. Uh, a week later, quadruple bypass, woke up in an intensive care unit of a hospital looking at a regular clock on the wall. I was totally disassociated from natural time, as you are in a, an intensive care unit. Uh, started to get delirious. I was suffering from something I later learned was called intensive care unit psychosis. And uh, um, basically, I remember the clock from mm -hmm. five weeks before. It snapped me out of my delirium. I realized that uh, the clock would, at least I guess, the clock would help some people in intensive care units avoid having that kind of delirium. Mm -hmm. And I swore that to whatever the source was that I would make it available as much as possible uh, and as easily as possible and began a seven year project to make that happen. And here we are. And here we are. Okay, so, so tell us, how does this clock help? How, did it, how does it help you? 
why would it help me? Why, why should the viewer uh, say, oh, hmm, maybe I should learn a little more about that? Well, that is a great question, and uh, uh, I, I do have uh, some answers that uh, hopefully make sense to uh, uh, members of your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the clock, what it's showing is it's showing two, the passages of two different kinds of cycles. What it's showing is the passage of time when the sun is below the horizon. And which one is that, this one? That's the yellow, the, 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 yellow, the black with the yellow corona. That's, okay. that's showing uh, the sun when it's below the horizon. It's the passage of night. Okay. Okay, then it shows night literally, not just figuratively, turning slowly into day, mm -hmm. going through sunrise. Now we're at the end of uh, dawn and the sun is going up. Uh, and over the course of the day, the sun will get to natural noon when the sun is directly mm -hmm. overhead. Okay. And then eventually, uh, after it is noon, uh, the sun will go into the afternoon uh, and will eventually start to almost uh, set, and that will be the beginning of dusk. And dusk is when day is turning into night. And as it begins to turn into night, you see the beauty of the sky mm -hmm. at dusk. Then you see sunset, and now you see the end of uh, the, the day and the beginning of night. Uh, those numbers, those Roman numerals, are not necessarily in the wrong position. They're in the wrong position compared to conventional time representations. Right. But if, uh, if you ever uh, wondered uh, what, uh, how, how a rooster, for example, thinks of time, a rooster doesn't think of the day starting right after midnight. A rooster knows that the day is starting at sunrise. So it begins to crow uh, at dawn uh, and then uh, really gets going uh, after the first hour of the day. Uh, which is also the way the days, the hours of the day were portrayed in the Bible. So all this, all this is supposed to help regulate one's circadian rhythm? Well, that's what we're hoping. That's that we, what you're hoping. What we know for a fact, uh -huh. is, and uh, uh, Emily here can t t discuss her experiences, for example, uh, the feedback that we get in general from our users is that when they look at it consciously, when they mm -hmm. look at the clock consciously, and they see where the sun is, and also they can see where the moon is as well. Uh, when the moon is above and below the horizon, it makes them feel happy in a really interesting, curiously comforting way. Okay. They, they're seeing the passage of time the way children tend to see time before they're conditioned by you know, corporate lifestyles and urban lifestyles to see time in a mechanical way. Okay. The clock lets people see things in a natural way that we know for sure psychologically makes people feel better, a little bit or a lot, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and also shows conventional time as well. So if you look at this, you can see that it shows where we are in the day mm -hmm. uh, from a natural time point of view, but also where we are from, in terms of uh, uh, regular mechanical clock time. Okay, so Emily, you are what uh, Yale's wife called a dedicated user. Yes. Now, now tell us, uh, you have this version. Yes, I okay. do. Okay. Tell us how you learned about it. I learned about it when Yale introduced uh, this idea at our coffee. Mm -hmm. where we live in the same uh, apartment complex. Mm -hmm. And since I've known a little bit about rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. your own body rhythm, uh, I did not know it really had a name. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I was really very curious because there is a certain amount of knowledge that we get to know about our own bodies right. and how it functions. And I really wanted to hear more about it. And I was willing, very interested in seeing, not that I didn't believe, but like everything else, you right. see if it's beneficial mm -hmm. to the individual. And uh, that's why I became a dedicated uh, user of this and what really I was interested in is one main area stress mm -hmm. <laughs> we have stress in our lives I have yeah. stress in my <laughs> life um, and there are times when I get stressful I will wake up in the middle of the night and I cannot go to sleep mm -hmm. and when these this time comes um, 
I usually take a uh, sleeping pill or, you know, some type of uh, supplement to get me back into a sleep mode. Yeah. Well, I get up now, and mine is in the living room. Uh, so I go in there, mm -hmm. wide awake, and I will uh, start looking at this. And also, there, it wasn't mentioned, there's music. Mm -hmm. And one of the music is the Katie Dids. Is that correct? Katie Dids? Uh, cricket, God's oh, Cricket Chorus. God's Cricket Chorus. Okay. And uh, I did not know it was crickets, uh -huh. but it was just this beautiful humming sound. Mm -hmm. And it was later that I learned that even these, well, once they were crickets, it wasn't musical, it wasn't done hum with human voices, then I realized there's a rhythm, uh -huh. and your body gets into that rhythm. Right. And not only seeing the time, and visually, for me, it was visual. Uh, this did totally relax me that I mm -hmm. could walk back into the bedroom and go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. I did not have to fight it anymore. And I just relate it as a uh, picture on the wall where it's slightly shifted. Mm -hmm. And you go past it all the time, and you, you know it's there, mm -hmm. but you don't pay much attention to. Well, then all of a sudden, you decide, well, I'm going to straighten that frame. Well, once you straighten the frame, all of a sudden, your attitude, <laughs> your well-being, mm -hmm. and it's like having a crooked picture frame in your life that is just centered. So what do you, you know? notice that's uh, different about your life now? I use it definitely as a, as a healing tool mm -hmm. uh, because I do now understand the rhythm and how important it is in our life for good health. Sleep, as mm -hmm. we know, um, is important. Some of us need more, some of us need less. But the point is, is we need sleep. Mm -hmm. We need to be in that calm state. And this exactly is what I use it for. And so, I have not taken sleeping aids or anything like that. I don't have to, because this has been beneficial mm -hmm. to my health. And um, not that it was poor health. I really can't judge it. Mm -hmm. All I know is it's well-being, and it works for me, and I get back to sleep. And you get back to sleep. And so I get it, back to sleep, and that's so it. So it, you know? it aids you in your sleep, and and it de-stresses. It yeah. de-stresses, de which I was gonna say yes. next. It obviously has helped you as far as, um, yeah, de-stressing, as you say. And so. it and it can come on and off. It's not a twenty-four hour thing that I'm stressed out. Mm -hmm. But there are times during the year, if it's not family or whatever, it's, mm -hmm. you know, problems come up in your life, and I could wake up in the middle of the night. Okay, so Gail, someone listening may say, well, if it's just a matter of looking at fixing your eyes on something that's just going around in circles, you can do that with a conventional clock, right? Nope. nope. Conventional nope. clocks do not show the passage of sun time and moon time. They okay. just show the passage of mechanical time. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's a big difference. That's one of the reasons why if you look at an advertisement for a wristwatch, whether it's a um, a, a Timex or a Philippe Petit, uh, they normally show the hands at uh, you know, 10 minutes to 2 or 10 minutes after 10. Uh, that's considered the most you know, interesting, prettiest uh, way to uh, represent uh, time. It's, it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, but if people look at uh, our clock, uh, for example, uh, every time you see it, uh, it's going to be different. Uh, and uh, very many times in the day, the conjunction of the phase of the moon where it's located, sometimes the moon is, uh, appears in the day, like the new moon is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you normally can't see it, but you can see it on the clock. Uh, and uh, whether, and sometimes uh, it looks better, uh, for example, at, uh, at dusk, it's now turning just about, uh, my timing is perfect here, it's just about turning uh, into dusk, okay? So you, there's a certain natural beauty mm -hmm. that uh, you can see with our clock, uh, which parenthetically happens to be so unique it is patented. There's a certain natural beauty that you can see, your mind can see, uh, perhaps your body can be informed, hopefully is being informed mm -hmm. of what it does need to know. So this is not something one would say, oh, what time is it? And look at this. No, this is this well, actually, is deeper. Well, actually, it is. Uh, if you look at uh, this uh, ver version, for example. Okay. Uh, no, you can keep uh, it there. Okay. We'll, we'll, okay. He'll, he'll get it. Okay. Um, 
if you look at that version, it is. Just turn it, it, just slightly, Yale, towards me so I can see it. Okay. All right, so we're looking okay. at that version. So you can see that uh, we're in the, uh, just about the end of the 8th, 12th of the day from sunrise. Mm -hmm. We're two thirds of the way through natural time, sun time, uh, beginning at sunrise, uh, one, one, one third of the way left uh, till uh, night. Uh, and also in the middle of the clock, you can see that it's about uh, 25 minutes to three o'clock. So it's actually, and, and that was one of the things that struck me when this first came to me, was it's not just a matter of showing people natural sun time and natural moon time, because that, even though it might be important, it's kind of impractical if it doesn't show, you know, when to get to your next meeting or when we get to pick up our grandchildren in Fluvanna at the school bus, mm -hmm. uh, it shows all three kinds of time, uh, two, two kinds of natural time plus conventional time. Okay. All right. So, um, and again, we know this is a lot of information, and for some people it, it may seem to be over your head, but what we encourage you to do is visit their website at truetime, T-U-R-E-T-Y-M-E, Dot org. There is a wealth of information about everything that Yale is speaking about. I know when I first heard about it, I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't understand. But the more I got to know you, the more we talked about it, you know, the, the comprehension became better and better. And that's what we encourage you to do, to go to, go to truetime.org. And as we said at the top of the show, much progress has been made since you started this. So you've gone from the laptops to all kinds of devices. So let's talk about all the different things that Better Times Project has that one can, um, they can use it on their, uh, you have a watch, you have an iPad. Talk about these, Yale. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, a uh, major breakthrough came about six uh, months ago uh, when uh, a Chinese uh, company and now a whole bunch of them uh, started making Android mini computers uh, the size of a USB drive. Uh, so the clock over there uh, is uh, basically running the clock uh, on our little special MK802 uh, device that runs our TrueTime uh, code, uh, Android code on it, and then uh, plugs in using an HDMI cable to uh, an HDMI uh, high-definition television. So that's one version. We do Okay, have... so so back up a little bit. Okay. Let me see that. Yep. This goes where? Again, inside This has the... a cable. This has a cable that attaches uh, in the other end. Uh -huh. uh, and the cable goes to the back of the television. So this is the this is this is what the television. Right. Gotcha. And this is what you have? No, no she have has one of these. You okay. one the Okay. Rolling she has one of these. Okay, all right. Okay. Now, the, right. the important thing about uh, uh, that, that version with the television is mm -hmm. that uh, we used to donate uh, used laptops running the clock uh, and uh, very often used in clock cases by John Lynch, uh, who has a uh, show going on at Woodbury School with his paintings and also some of the clock cases. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was very costly, uh, and basically I funded it myself. Uh, with generous help of laptops from people like uh, you, Andrea. Uh, but now what we're able to do is to uh, make available our clock code, uh, make available uh, MK802 devices that are cost about $50. Mm -hmm. uh, if an institution has uh, uh, low cost uh, HD TVs of any size, they can put okay. these into a, a person's room, okay. or a school room, or a, or a common room. Okay. okay, all right, so, so we have the TV. We have that. And now we also have it uh, working uh, on uh, Android mobile phones as well. Okay. Now uh, how does that help a person while being on the phone? Well, basically, um, instead of being limited to just seeing the clock when it's uh, in your home, uh, you can take your phone with you and it's sort of a pocket watch version of, of one of these standalone devices. Okay. okay, so you could just set it, have it sitting on your desk with it running. You can have it yeah. on your desk running or on a mantelpiece running, or you can have it on, on, your, your, on your phone, take it with you. Uh -huh. uh, we can also uh, make it available uh, 
from the Google Play Store so you can get it and run it on a, an Android tablet as well. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we're very excited about uh, with the clock is that in addition to looking at the clock, you can also journal your moods. Uh, if you go to truetime, uh, truetime you can learn about not only its sun time and moon time, but also its mood time feature, uh, which lets you uh, record your moods, then track your moods, and then also analyze your moods based on where those entries were in the course of the passage of day and night, and also in the course of the passage of the moon above and below the horizon, and also the phase of the moon as well. So um, to the extent that uh, natural rhythms are affecting not just our biological processes, but also our moods, uh, true time gives you the ability to see how natural cycles are affecting your moods. Okay, and speaking of moods, women. You, you say this could really benefit women, right? Right. And why, why is that? Why, why do you promote women so much? Okay, that's, that's great. And that's the reason why Jackie started a, a, a sister project called Better Times, Better for, Times women. for Women. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the studies, well, well first of all, if, you, people need, if, if viewers want to know anything about circadian rhythm related illnesses uh, and don't want to go to our website, all you have to do is Google a particular illness of interest and add the word circadian. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you'll find all kinds of studies about disrupted rhythms and Parkinson's disease, autism, Alzheimer's, breast cancer, long, mm -hmm. long list. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can do that uh, very easily. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the studies that we came across was a fascinating one, uh, which has been followed up a lot. Uh, it actually followed up a little bit, not as much as it probably should. And it turns out this study showed without question that a woman's menstrual cycle affects her circadian rhythm and her circadian rhythm affects her menstrual cycle. Hmm. So women, we think, might be more susceptible to circadian rhythm and menstrual cycle illnesses uh, than really is being uh, studied right now. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that uh, um, any, uh, any institution, whether it's uh, the Alzheimer's Foundation or Autism Foundation or Parkinson's Foundation uh, will uh, want to apply for a grant. Now, we don't expect uh, institutions to take allocated, previously allocated money mm -hmm. to do true time research. We think that would be impractical and very difficult for them to do. On the other hand, mm -hmm. we'd be more than happy to help them in any way we can uh, get grants so they can do their own research on how True Time might be able to help in different ways their constituencies. Okay, and, and I'm sure you would echo those sentiments, Absolutely. right, yes. Emily? Because because you are, as Jackie said, a, a dedicated user, and you've been mm -hmm. using it how long? For about two years. Now. About two years. Yeah, when, okay. it, when he first offered. Okay. Uh, offered it, and uh, I was. I was definitely interested mm -hmm. because okay. whether we know the word or not, we do know that we do have a rhythm. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, absolutely, absolutely. And so um, I, I know by you now being a B Corporation that, that um, you still have the interest in helping those nonprofits. So yes. any of those nonprofits that, y you know, you want to learn more about this Alzheimer's Association, Virginia Institute of Autism, um, Name some others that you feel could benefit from this. Well, again, um, what I would suggest uh, is that uh, any, any, any foundations or institutes that are working with uh, people who have different problems, different uh, health issues, psychological issues, you know, just Google whatever your area is, mm -hmm. add the word circadian, and you will see for yourself uh, if you might be a candidate uh, for... Uh, true time kind of research. Mm -hmm. okay. I'd also like to just mention quickly yeah. mm -hmm. uh, just, just some other things. Um, we, we're delighted that uh, Emily has gotten uh, benefits from using it. Um, but we have been informed by uh, our legal counsel 
uh, to make it real sure that everybody knows that if you, you have a need or you feel the need uh, to, to basically uh, go off of a particular medication, uh, before you do so, you know, contact your prescribing Absolutely. physician or other healthcare professional Absolutely. because it's very important that you just don't do anything on your own. You really have Absolutely. to make sure that you, you know, even though we're delighted that you, you're getting, you feel you're getting some benefits, we, we want you to be very careful about that. Absolutely. So that's, that's the first thing. Secondly, mm -hmm. just want to quickly uh, thank again uh, John and Kathy Lynch mm -hmm. uh, for donating clocks uh, to our Alzheimer's dementia units and Virginia Discovery Museum and schools. John has a, this uh, show going on right now at the Woodbury School. I uh, want to thank uh, Professor Roy Wagner of UVA, mm -hmm. who has been incredibly generous with his ideas and also financially. I want to thank Tony Leboa of CHAPS, dear fellow who has uh, at times uh, shown off the clocks. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Will. I uh, also want to thank uh, uh, all of our programmers, particularly um, Vladimir Velasovic, uh, and uh, uh, our help from uh, Lazar Kovacevic. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a number of, of wonderful programmers and, and support people in, in Serbia uh, mm -hmm. who right. have uh, been uh, very helpful, as well as locally here uh, uh, in the U.S., uh, t uh, Catherine and uh, Tom Darrow. And I do not want to forget my wife, Jacqueline. <laughs> can't forget Jacqueline. Who has been my uh, just mm -hmm. support and mainstay and motiva motivation, and mm -hmm. I'm hoping someday it'll work out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, and, and okay, for more information, it's truetime.org. Uh, we thank you, you'll learn a lot, we know you will, because I'm still learning, even in doing research for the show, there's so much more new information. But Emily, we thank you for thank being you. on the show and coming on to tell us your experience with the clock at Yale. It's just been tremendous seeing you plug a, plug away with this and the progress and success mm -hmm. you're seeing with it. And well, well, if I could, have, know. if I could have the last word. Uh, <laughs> well, you have two seconds. Thank you, thank you <laughs> very much, Andrea and Cal. Oh, and Dave, and, and Penelope, Dave. <laughs> and Dave. And we Dave. thank you for watching the show. This has been a Positive Channel special production with the show entitled Better Times Project. We'll see you soon.